Urban good news gospel and inspirational music from an Afrobeats perspective. It's the good news show, uh, gospel breakfast, and uh, on uh, colorful radio. Uh, good morning, here with you every Sunday from uh, 8 to 10 a.m. Uh, and we have two distinguished guests uh, online uh, this morning as well. Good morning, uh, Michael. Good morning, Ed. Good morning, good morning, Wayne. How are you doing, sir? Good, thank you. How are you guys? Not too bad, not too bad at all. Good, good, good. It's good to have you good. back on the show. Uh, you, you're regular contributors as well. Uh, and uh, first of all, we'll talk uh, get a little introduction to uh, kick off at three uh, uh, from Michael Wallace, and then we'll talk to Ed about uh, all of the things, the great things that he's doing. Blacks can't swim, film documentaries, co-founder of the Black Swimming Association, uh, and uh, looking forward to hearing more about your book launch uh, as well. Um, let's start with with Michael. Kick off at three. For those of of our listeners who don't know what Kick off at three is, give us a a quick uh, intro, and then we'll get into an update uh, a bit later on. Well, good morning, Wayne. Good morning. Mm. Uh, your music, you always start me off on a Sunday morning. <laughs> I'm bouncing around with my Bible here, man. <laughs> good, good. Great way to start the week, man. <laughs> in, in a good way, in a good yeah, way, of yeah, course. Amen, 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 amen. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, thank you for having myself and um, Ed on your, your show. Um, humble to be here. Um, I'm the co-founder of Kick Up Free, along with Ash Levin. Um, and j- just an exclusive, we've now brought in uh, my son, Shiloh Wallace, oh, wow. who's now coming in. Uh, we're handing the baton on to our young people who oh, will be staring the ship with Kick Off Free as a as a director. So, um, oh, yeah, no. exclusive for Colourful Radio. Wow, just wow. Just <laughs> <morning way. laughs> wow. But, um, yeah, myself and Ashley set it up together in 2017, and uh, the whole blueprint, the ethos was... Um, to better relationships between uh, young people and the police, which has been heavily supported by the Black Police Association, which I was also an executive committee member. Um, and, and naturally, they're championing what we're doing, building those positive relationships. Um, but also as well, the key ethos is to raise awareness for multiple charities around the country through the power of um, football, but it's evolved over the years. Uh, where we've now we've not just done football events around the country, but uh, we've done running, we've done cycling, uh, we've got involved with Ed with through swimming, and we've got some more things coming up. But we hold that till wow. till later. Uh, um, but I, I'm I must say I must give a big shout out. It's about the young people. A massive shout out to there's a champion young man named Amari um, who's been volunteering and champion of being an ambassador of Kick of Free and support young Amari. And then there's a young Isaac, another shining star. No pressure, Ed, but if you've got another film coming up, I've got some lovely young men <laughs> and that will that will be champion. So well massive um champion um, young Isaac just to achieve all these dreams and goals. But uh, no pressure Ed, but we've got some more Young stars for you. <laughs> it, it, it was was that a hint, Michael, to get me to, to get me writing again? <laughs> oh my goodness, I, I don't know what to say about you two. I mean, I, I was saying to Ed off air, you know, I don't know when you guys sleep. I mean, um, I've had a little, uh, not a hiatus, but just a little period of uh, of not being that visible. Um, but you guys have just been on social media like all the time just uh but let me come to ed now as well because um he's just as as prolific as yourself really probably um at this over this period maybe even a little bit more really um where do we start well, one, one of the things i wanted to say as well and i think we, we spoke about it before ed and, and with yourself michael is that people like yourselves um are actually creating history and part, and I'm not even going to say black history. I'm just going to say history in the UK. And it, it's so it's I'm honoured to to be part of that that journey. Um, Ed, tell us your story briefly, um, but also, <laughs> but also, also as well, just in terms of the the, the book launch coming up and, and your trilogy of films and how you got into that. So so basically, so basically, it all started. Um, well, it actually started when I was nine years old um, in Ghana when I asked my mom 
um, that I wanted to go to a, a pool party of one of my 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 schoolmates, and um, and she and I, because I couldn't swim, and she said, "Well, it's not really important. I mean, what you need to concentrate is on your books." And not not you know swimming. You can swim anytime. We don't have a pool. We don't live near the sea. Because that time we were living in in Ghana, um, in, in inland. So so I so I didn't go to that party. And and as as I when I came back to the UK, I think I was nineteen at the time. Um, swimming didn't even feature in any part of my life. You know, it just didn't exist. And and later on, I started hearing people. That looked like me. That when when black people saying, "Oh, black people can't swim because um, of our heavy bones, and black people don't swim because we don't." You know, it's not one of our things. And so I used that as a safety net um, to hide behind. So if anybody, so if I, you know, I can remember once I went to a, a pool party, and all the the black people per se were, you know, standing standing next to the DJ, playing music and all that kind of thing, and the few white people that were there were actually in the pool. And, and I go, oh, so it's true then, you know, <laughs> what I hear is true. And it never really, nothing, nothing actually, yeah, I never got into the pool until about two, three years ago. And and, and the reason why I did so was because my daughter, I've got a um, 12-year-old daughter, and, she, and my wife made it, made sure that she could learn, she learned how to swim. And I said to myself that if she was ever in difficulty and I couldn't get into the pool to help her, and something happened. I will never forgive myself. And that's what made me learn, decide to learn how to swim. And then, as a result, I made, I decided to make a film about it, um, which is a film called Blast Can't Swim. Um, the first film, this was in 2018. It was supposed to be a short, you know, little um, short film, just something to put on YouTube. But as a result, I realized that, hold on, there's a bigger issue than, than, than just me. And then it started a whole series of events. <laughs> and, and here we are today. Wow, phenomenal. And um, uh, I know that you've got uh, a very, very important event coming up very, very shortly as yeah. well. Tell us a little bit about that. So, so um, uh, uh, okay, there's three film documentaries, a film called Last Count Swim, the sequel, um, and, the fi- and the last one I did, which the last year was Rewind, Blast Counts Room Rewind. But the, the, the thing is that I noticed that every time I, I'm, I have an interview or I'm speaking to someone, um, oh, I co-founded the Black Swimming Association. So if, as, as, as we're having conversations, the first thing anybody asks me is, uh, oh, so how did it all begin? And it's like, this is, you know, we started, I mean, started this journey almost five years ago. And even up until today, the conversation starts with how did it all begin? So I said to myself, wouldn't it be good if I could um, put together a book of some sort of the journey so that people can understand it? Because obviously people are asking these questions all the, every day. So therefore, there must be some interest in it. And and that's where and I did some research from all the pictures I had, all the conversations I had from the beginning. I said, why don't I put this all in a book? And that idea came to me in September last year. By November, December, I'd finished the book. Wow. <laughs> it's a, it's a, yeah, and it's a visual journey. It's a visual journey from you now, from the very beginning. It's got text, it's got emails, messages, pictures. So it's very authentic. It's everything that you know, and and and, and everyone that was part of that journey from the very beginning is in that book. Um, and yeah, and so basically, um, I'm launching the book. I'm doing a VIP launch um, in two weeks' time, but the book is now available on Amazon, uh, but at, at a discounted price. It's available on BlacksCanSwim.com, and you get a signed copy as well. So yeah, so that's it. So basically, it's a visual journey of Blacks Can Swim, and it's the whole journey from the very beginning. Um, Wayne, you're in there. I, I, Michael, I'm shocked. You're in there. <laughs> because you're all part of the journey, oh, wow. you know. So yeah, it tells the whole story. Mm. And, I, and I love the way um, you both celebrate other people as well. Really, it's so you know, so important. And in this day when people are really good at promoting themselves, it's good to know that that there are uh, individuals and groups and organisations that are are keen to um, to co-promote as well. Um, because that's yeah. really, really important, and and collaborations, uh, not about you know just you know being conscious about um, having that limelight, um, and being more concerned about the issues. 
Um, I suppose there's a balance, isn't there, really? Because there's that, that whole thing when you have to promote things and then you get to do different things as well. You get to attend different events. People put um, words after your, your name, um, Michael. <laughs> 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 you know, but, but, but how, how do you stay grounded and, and, and why is that important for you to both to really kind of remember what you're doing this for? Um, I'll, 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 I'll start with this, Mike. Um, so, so basically, a lot of people say to me, oh, so you must be so proud of what you're doing. You must be so there. And I never stopped to think, you know, it's almost as if when I when I was writing the book and I look at the book, actually not when I was writing, when I was reading, when I finished and I, read, I was going through it, I was like, wow, I've done so much in such a period. period. And, and I think the reason why I managed to do that is because when I do something, when I, do, I, it's, I know the, the, the main aim is to encourage people to swim and water safety so basically i'm just constantly on the go you know i'm constantly on the go you know i've done this okay i'm not going to sit down and reflect i'm just going to move on to the next and then move on to the next and the more i can keep people talking about it the more i can engage with people the better so it's so it's it gets to a point that and you know it's at the end of the book i was looking and i go wow i've done so much but do, do I do I feel proud of myself? Do I? Do, no, because I, it's something just I had to do. Something that we have to do. And when I met with Michael, we had you know when I first met Michael, and that was at um, the screening of the sequel, and we just talked for hours. And you know, because we we are all doing exactly the same. It's not about us. It's about everyone else. You know, it's if if I if I if by what I'm doing I save one person from drowning. It doesn't matter whether they're black, Asian, white, or anything. If I if I just save one person from drowning, then all that year, all that work over the last five years has been worthwhile, and that's how I see it. Mm. Yeah, um, yes, yeah, so, um, I'll just come in there um, and uh, just to to echo what um, uh, Ed is saying. Um, <laughs> funny enough, I don't see this as work. This is this is my passion. This is my community. This is this is uh, the legacy. Um, this is about passing the baton on to young people. It's about giving opportunities. Uh, there's so much negativity around young people, um, especially in the current climate of mental health. Uh, you know, the youth violence. Um, COVID has changed so many things. You know, um, we're having tragedies. Uh, you know, and, and condolences to Christian Atsu from Ghana. Um, you know, those to the friends and family. You know, we're having so many tragedies, and we, you know, we, we need to go forward together. And I'm just humbled to to play a part with all my friends, family, and all the young people involved. And in. uh, yes, I was awarded recently uh, a Queen's Police Medal by Prince um, Prince William. Recently, uh, we had this good discussion. Um, I did ask him if Aston Villa would win the league. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he laughed at me. <laughs> I think I broke more protocol when I started talking about his team, but we had good laughter. He acknowledges what we're doing, kick off free, and how we're supporting young raising awareness charities. It was lovely at Windsor Castle. Uh, and it's a legacy about how we champion young people and supporting from all race cultures of, of just coming together as one people. Well, phenomenal. And you both are so humble with that as well. And I, I think that's really, really important. Um, so, Michael, give us an update as to what Kickoff at Three has been doing and it will, will do over this next year. Yeah, um, we've, we've, well, we've got a multitude of different things. Uh, we, a couple of weeks ago at the British Transport Police Headquarters, um, we done our national planning meeting myself and actually delivered our presentation of what we're going to be doing around the country um, we've had some really good police forces, um, Kent, Bedfordshire, uh, Northern Ireland, PSNI, Nottinghamshire. There's some great police forces, but most importantly, it's the community. There was a lot of community members and uh, relevant charities in attendance. Um, Denise, if she's listening, um, she was she was there. Uh, and, you know, Vanessa, some great people in the community champion of what we're doing it's not just about the police this is about the community they they they're the ones that are really pushing it they're the legacy you know we, i you know we go into an area we deliver and we go home but we could these are the ones who are constantly in the community working with young people so 
delighted that there's so many community members support what we're doing. Um, going forward, you will see um, uh, we're going to be go have our big community finales. Twenty uh, fourth of June will be in Hertfordshire, Oakland's College, delivering a finale community cup for under twelves and um, girls, and then we will have our London community cup finale. Twenty third of July will be um, at the Warren Bromley. And hopefully we'll get you there this time, Wayne, yes, DJing yes. and helping us out. Um, but we'll be around. You'll see a multitude of football tournaments going on around the country. Um, Ed doesn't know this yet, but <laughs> we're trying to pull him into um, the Henley Swim at the beginning of July that our ambassador, um, Charlotte, is pulling swim off for three. We're, we're going to be doing some water swimming. Wow. And we're going to be swim off at three. We're going to be doing, encouraging it. Um, those to swim from all different backgrounds, well, wetsuits, hats, goggles. So do join us, Wayne. And uh, we're still trying to get the uh, head to dip his toe in the, in the <laughs> open water where we can. <laughs> so you, you'll see us, and you'll see us around the Windrush Festival, uh, Radiate Windrush Festival. Oh, wow. 25th. You'll see us. Don't worry, we're, we're about, we're doing a lot of yeah, different yeah. things. Just watch us on social media, see who we're working with. <laughs> And uh, most importantly, please come and support the young people who will be involved. We've come almost to the end of the, the interview, guys, but I have a section on my show called The Good News Words of Cheer. Um, I would like both of you very, very briefly to give us, the listeners, a, a good news word of cheer, word of encouragement, a word of hope. Who wants to go first? Um, you go first, Ed. Um, I, I, I just simply say that in this world where this is full of tragedies, it's full of, you know, so much, so much bad news on a day-to-day basis, we all have something in us that can make people feel better. We can all, we have some, you know, and I, I, I used to run a campaign before, um, um, a homeless campaign before uh, Blacks Can't Swim, and I'd run it for two years called Bear Witness. And on the campaign, I used to say, if you're walking down the street and you see a homeless person in the street, it doesn't it's not about money and the client got to speak to a lot of homeless people and they said people just walk by and they they give them a pound or they give us or they go to tesco and they get a sandwich and they give it to them they go oh they go thank you very much i really appreciate that but that's not the important thing the important thing is somebody can just stop by and give me eye contact and just say hello and they said and, and, and they said sometimes i sit down here for a whole day without a single eye contact and watch millions of people pass by if just us as human beings, you know, sometimes just speaking with people, you know, makes so much of a difference. So, and we all have something to make other people happy. So let's just keep on doing, you know, and I always talk about the swimming thing and all that kind of thing, encourage people to swim, but it's just having conversations in general. So let's just keep on doing that and have a great, you now. make other people feel good. Thank you for that. Ed. Wonderful words. And, and just finally for me, uh, we our slogan, we believe. Just continue to believe in what we're doing. We're looking for, continue looking for sponsors, supporters to help us champion change, help us help the young people. Believe, believe in what we're doing. Support us in any way, shape or form. And this is about young people. Um, and also just people like Ellie so, um, and all our sponsors, just people that are out there just um, supporting what we're doing. And just thank you and hope to see you at our events. And, um, and Ed, I've just seen a tweet from Henley Swim that they're, they're listening in it and they're hoping they're gonna, you're going to join us in the open water. So people are listening. <laughs> <laughs> pressure, pressure. <laughs> uh, Michael Wallace, uh, Kicker Factory, uh, Ed Akira, um, Blacks Can't Swim and uh, lots more to come. Uh, Wait, really... when, before, before you go, before yes. you go, on the internet can i please tell people please get the book right. the visual journey of last count swim is full of um news articles pictures unseen footage untold stories the ups and downs the co founder of the black swim and such it's got everything in there so please get it it's on um amazon but it's also at blackscountswim.com um for um for my discounted version and a signed copy as well Great stuff, and look look forward to uh, 
to um, looking at the the visual uh, book as well and and um, being a part of that uh, history. I, I did say at the start, um, it's not just about uh, Black history; it's about history in the UK as well. Uh, momentous occasions, and that's what we're doing, creating memories as well. Thank you both for for um, being on the show, and look forward to a further update. And hopefully, yes, the next time we can have you both in the studio. Yeah, it's a pleasure. And don't forget your Googles, Wayne, and your swimming trunks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, my, my, and my armbands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much. Okay, speak soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Michael Wallace and uh, Ed Akira, uh, really uh, are appreciative of them being on the Good News Show. Uh, and we will have some further updates from them, uh, uh, I'm sure, in the months to come.